Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today we'll talk about pre-study visits or site selection visits. More after the break. The visits that are carried out before the start of the active study phase are extremely important. The so-called pre-study visits or site selection visits decide with which study centers and investigators the monitor or sponsor will work together. The pre-study visits create the basis for further work with the test center. Without well-prepared and well-thought-out pre-study visits, there may never be monitoring visits because no patients are recruited or the wrong centers are selected. At the beginning, a feasibility check should be carried out. A so-called feasibility questionnaire should be used to check some facts such as, what can the trial center do? What does the trial center want? What experience do doctors have with studies? Do they also have experience with the legal requirements that have to be met? And one more thing crucial to the success of the study is that do they have the right patients? Information about the patients is very important. The trial site also knows this, and it can easily be exaggerated in terms of recruiting potential. It is therefore appropriate to ask precise and critical questions about the patients and whether real numbers are given. If you discover inconsistencies in the statements about the number of patients, this may indicate that the trial center did not properly deal with the questionnaire and the study documents. If this is the case, note it as a negative point in your report. Furthermore, it is important to adjust the data provided by the doctors, in most cases by a correction factor, because overestimating patient recruitment is quite normal. This correction factor is easily overlooked by sponsors. It says that as a rule of thumb, it can be roughly assumed that we reduce the number of patients indicated by the investigator by 30%. For some medications, the correction factor can be up to 50%. This is the only way to ensure that realistic figures are determined. From the sum of the possible centers, you now make the decision for certain centers. A possible selection criterion could be the number of patients that could potentially be recruited. However, you can also use the documents to determine whether these trial centers have the right staff, experience, and equipment. Once the decision has been made to select specific trial sites, the pre-study visits are arranged. To confirm the appointment, you now send a letter and an agenda outlining the time required for these visits. Upon arrival at the trial site, you will also review the qualifications and the study experience of the staff. If you contact the investigator in charge of the study, please remember to ask for the CV of the study team. This allows you to collect certain information from the CV during the conversation. Often the mistake is made of being too uncritical in the choice of trial sites. It is important to first of all tickle the interest of the trial sites. Are they really interested? Or does the investigator just want to earn money? Or is participation important for the doctor's ego? Be critical of the trial sites, and it is important to ask yourself questions like, do the doctors have enough time for the study? Do they signal a real interest? Does the trial site have the staff to participate in studies? Is there a study nurse? Is there a pharmacy that would participate? Is the necessary equipment available? Is there an efficient laboratory? Are there also the patients needed for the study? If you involve many unmotivated centers in a study, it can negatively affect the conduct of the study. Timelines are not kept, the data quality is low, and the study often becomes much more expensive than if more effort is put into selecting the centers at the beginning of a study. During PSV, also check for the available facilities or the essential equipment and devices that are important for participation in the study. Do not assume that every clinic that shows an interest in participating in the study also has the necessary equipment. This is not always the case. Moreover, not all departments of the university hospitals have ECG, freezers, and centrifuges. 
It is highly inefficient if the absence of these facilities is detected when the active phase of the study is supposed to begin. This is embarrassing for the doctor, but also for the monitor who selected the center. Make a checklist and check all of the necessary items, such as the premises, refrigerators, freezers, cameras, X, scales, and whatever else is on your checklist. In order to ensure a secure process, each study requires that the continuity of personnel is maintained. The question therefore arises as to whether, if the need arises, there will be enough replacement personnel. This is generally not a problem for clinics, but it is a problem for general practitioners. In Germany, there is a legal obligation to appoint a deputy to the investigator. We can get a problem if a site has only one investigator and the other staff consists of only medical assistants. When visiting and talking to a potential investigator, it is important to find out the GCP understanding in particular for education of the study participants, GCP compliant consent, documentation of AE, timely notification of SAE, documentation of source data, source data verification, audits and inspections, understanding of tasks of the ethics committees and authorities, discussion of the study conditions plays a fundamental role in the success of the study. If you find that the investigator is not suitable for a study, you can tell him personally. In your report, you formulate your rejection without being offensive. For example, by writing that the investigator does not show sufficient interest and does not have enough time. If you are not clearly convinced, you are better off saying no. Remember, Nothing is more expensive in a study than involving uninterested investigators. When talking to the investigator, the experiences with the test product must be discussed and reviewed. This is relatively easy to find out for drugs that are already on the market. An absolutely permissible question is whether the investigator has already used a certain drug or drugs of the active substance group and gained experience in its application. Check the investigator's level of knowledge to see whether he knows how the, the substances work. After the pre-study visit, write a report and provide information about the test center, and in the report you should convey whether the test center is recommended for the study or not. If you would not recommend the center, you should justify this with your impression about the trial site. However, only use objective reasons such as missing patients, limited study team, or competing studies. So much about the pre-study visits. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time. Goodbye.